My name is Wahid Tanner from Electronic Thinking, and today I'm going to show you how to put together this circuit board from Maximum Robotics that uses a combination of surface mount components and through hole components. Now we're going to put this together today. I have a, a blank board here that I haven't started on. We're going to put this together today using a hot plate technique. Uh, this particular hot plate, uh, you can buy these from uh, Walmart, uh, Target, pretty much any, any place that sells uh, normal kitchen appliances. The benefit of using a hot plate like this is you can take your time, lay out all the parts, uh, put them in properly, get them all lined up, put your circuit board on the hot plate, and solder them all in at one time. So that's what I'm going to show you today. The problem with the hot plates is a lot of them don't have a temperature gauge to tell you how hot they get. Um, and you need something that's going to get up to at least 450 degrees Fahrenheit. What you will be using is solder paste. It's um, fine grains of solder that have been suspended in a flux solution. It kind of resembles like a thick uh, toothpaste. Now this has a shelf life of about six months and you want to keep it in your refrigerator when you're not using it because it will go bad. What we're going to be using to put it on the circuit board is a simple toothpick. Uh, we'll take some solder paste and I will show you how to put it onto the circuit board. Uh, that is about it for the parts that you need, so let's get started. You can tell that this is good solder paste because there's no separation. In other words, it looks like it's all the same. It's just kind of a, um, a putty type texture to it. This is good solder paste. If you find that yours looks oily or it has streaks in it, then it, it probably uh, needs to be uh, replaced uh, and, and use some better solder paste. For this board, there are many components in this area that need to be soldered in place with surface mount soldering. But the one in particular that you need to watch out for is the electrolytic capacitor. And we're actually going to solder this board together in two steps. In the first step, we're going to put just the electrolytic capacitor in place. And we're going to solder that one in. And then we're going to come back and do the rest. Now the reason you want to do this is the electrolytic capacitor will take longer to, to melt the solder than the other components on the board. And you run the risk of ruining your other components if you try to solder all the other components at the same time as the electrolytic capacitor. And if you need to reposition it, you can. Just pick it up and move it over a bit. Once you've got it aligned the best you can, then we are ready to melt this solder. It's a good idea to start out with your hot plate cold. That way you can touch it without getting burned as you're laying the board onto the hot plate. So fast forwarding a little bit, the hot plate has been on for maybe 30 seconds now. And checking the temperature, it's already at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. What you're looking for is the paste, which started out a dull gray color, to turn into a nice silvery shine. We're at 385 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're just starting to see on the close-up overhead microscope, there it goes. And you saw the electrolytic capacitor shift in its location slightly. There's a bit of smoke coming, and we're done. So we can now turn it off. Now it's still melted solder, so don't try to pick up your board yet. You will get burned if you try to pick it up right now. And your parts will slide all over, and you get to start all over again. So just like we put the solder paste on the capacitor, you want to spread this out and put it on all of the other pads on the board. Again, 
try not to get too much. If you're going to run into problems, it's probably going to be because you put too much solder paste rather than too little. As long as you've got some on there, you'll be okay. And if you ever make a mistake and you want to start again, it's very easy to take a clean tissue and just wipe it off. All the solder paste is now on the pads and what I'm going to do now is take a clean toothpick and just clean it up a little bit. Anywhere you get some stray solder paste, just make sure that it's just sitting on the pad nicely and we don't have any stray solder paste where it's not supposed to be. The first component that we're going to put in place is this QFP integrated circuit. This is the AT Mega 644 and you want to make sure that you get the alignment. So it's very important to look for the little dot right here that shows where pen number one and match that up with the dot on the package. And then gently put that in place and then we will position it. What we're looking for here is to get it lined up as best we can with the pads. Now just like the electrolytic capacitor shifted in its position when the solder paste melted, this one will also shift in position and will line itself up pretty good as long as we get it lined up as best we can initially. The next step is to lay down some of the capacitors. They will go across the pads like that. And again, just try to get them lined up as best you can. The reason we put the big QFP package in first is so that we would have a lot more room to line it up without all these other capacitors getting in the way. Just take your time, get them lined up, push them down a bit on the board will help to seat them in place. Give the board one look over before you put it on the hot plate. Make sure that you're happy with the alignment of all the parts. You'll notice that there's a small depression in the middle of the hot plate. Now you're not going to get good contact if you have parts that you're trying to solder that are sitting on top of this depression. The board that we're working with today has components just in this upper region and it will fit at any point around the outside surface of this hot plate. We're at 360 degrees Fahrenheit so it shouldn't be too much longer and the solder paste will start melting. What you want to do is you want to keep your eye on it and watch until they've all melted because some of them will melt sooner than others. So you don't want to turn the heat off the moment you see one melt. Keep your eye on all of them. Uh, there goes some. Okay, we're starting to get some melting. It's flowing. The solder paste is flowing on some of the components. So we're now finished with the surface mount soldering. There are a few solder bridges, but that is enough for this video. Join us for another video where I'll show you how to remove the solder bridges and repair any mistakes that were made uh, in the uh, first uh, round of soldering that we just did. Uh, as always, you can find more videos like this uh, and other videos on electronics at www.electronicthinking.com. Thank you for watching.